Hello and welcome to my program, Don't Just Age, Engage. I'm Larry Grimm and I am a coach for elderhood and I want you all to have the most extraordinary elderhood that's possible. Question today is, does it matter what your life story is and how you tell it? I like to use the word life script sometimes, but does it matter how you tell your life story? We're looking at the power of story, our second episode actually, and uh, want to, I'm going to introduce you to a really dynamic, wonderful co life coach who has this at the center of his life coaching, this whole topic. I want to introduce you to what my program is, all of my programs every second Tuesday with the help of, uh, of Think Tech Hawaii, great partners in, in uh, work here online. Uh, what I use is a, as center to my coaching with elders is five spiritual tasks, I call them, that elders have to deal with as they go through this stage of their life. It's a, it's a growing up process. You didn't know that you're still growing up, even though you're an elder. And the, the first one is grieving. We looked at grieving and the intensity of grieving and really the, the many many uh, experiences of grief that we often have in elderhood that we didn't have before. The second is sorting out, but sorting out our stories. You know, we love to sort out our stuff. And um, many of us, many of us get caught up in sorting out our, our material goods and stuff and discover what the stories are of our lives that are connected to that stuff. Well, we're looking at the power of those stories right now in the these two episodes, and I'm happy to say that we're going to have another grand experience here of looking at that particular um, spiritual task. Just quickly, the last three are forgiving, preparing, and letting go. And now I have the great privilege of introducing a colleague of mine, a coaching colleague, Aaron J. Fulton. And Aaron, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, for your 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 work that you're doing with with uh, people in their life transitions and coaching, and Aaron, would you please just give us a, a brief introduction of yourself? Yes, thank you very much for that warm introduction. My name is Aaron J. Fulton Jr., and I am calling in from Denver, Colorado. Uh, I focus on uh, helping men or people rewrite their life story. Um, and live a more prosperous and fulfilling lifestyle. So I'm happy to be here today. I'm happy you're here. Uh, again, it's on the second of the, uh, today's program is on the second of those uh, spiritual tasks, tasks of growing up in our elderhood of our story or, or our life script. And um, one of the things that I had not considered and was, uh, was wanting to focus upon is just what what Aaron does, which is to look at the possibility of rewriting your life story or rewriting your life script. So Aaron, let's just get right into the topic for the day. And uh, from your perspective, would you first start by saying, what do you see as the, the power, uh, power of story, the power of life story, just in general? Oh, the power of life story can can either place you in a, a place where you're thriving, you're living in abundance, you're living a fulfilled lifestyle. But the other side of that, the shadow side of that is, is your story can also lead you into a self-sabotaging place, a place of, of limiting, uh, limiting beliefs. And that's where a lot of people get trapped. You know, they get trapped in those limiting beliefs and those limiting beliefs become their their life's narrative and now their, night, their life's narrative becomes their, their reality. So they end up living a false reality. So part of what I do is help people first identify those stories and rewrite those stories so they can live a more balanced lifestyle. I notice you focused on men. That's, uh, is there a particular uh, need among men for this kind of work? you've well, identified well absolutely absolutely um men oftentimes we create stories uh in our head 
we create these stories in our head and we end up bringing these stories that we created in our head into our workplace. We bring these stories into our household. We bring these stories into society. And we respond impulsively a lot of times based off of the stories that we convinced ourselves is true. There's many times when we misunderstand a situation. And when we misunderstand a situation and we create these false stories, now we place ourselves in a, a guarded place. Now I said I deal with men. That's that's what my, my niche is, my niche to deal with men, but mm -hmm. these principles can apply to men and women. Rewriting your life story. Because the same way men can bring false stories into the household, you know, women can also bring false stories into the household. But before bringing these stories into your in your household, look at the stories that we're bringing into our own lives and to ourselves. You know, some of these stories are toxic. We bring these stories into our, our flow and it disrupts everything. And now we're operating from a place of paranoia. We're operating from a place where there's a perimeter and we can't fully reach out to what we want. We can't really expand our, our, our beliefs. We only trust in what's in front of us. And a lot of times mm -hmm. that's limiting right there. You know, it, it's holding us in a box. Yeah. So, so I'm curious, just as, as we start this, um, I'm curious about your own story. And um, what would you share with us about your own story and its impact on your life and what you've done with your story? Is it too early in our discussion no. to, uh, go, to go there? No, not at all. Not at all. My story consists of several. Well, I'm going to say my theme consists of several stories. Um, I had two marriages and, and both marriages, uh, they, they weren't successful. And I found myself pointing the finger at my partner and I blamed my partner. And in doing so, I placed myself as the victim. Well, when we place ourselves as the victim, we're less likely to receive because we're so guarded all the time. Mm -hmm. We want to protect ourselves. So I had to dig deep into why am I pointing a finger at everyone else? So mm -hmm. that was one reason why I decided to do the work and dive deep into rewriting a life story. The second reason, uh, I had a stepson that passed away from cancer. And oh it was a goodness. very traumatic, yeah, it was a very traumatic experience. And later on down the line, you know, my son was, was, was born. And I remember when my son was, was born, the first time I looked at my son and I held him in my arms, I was afraid to love my son. Mm. I was terrified to love my son because mm. I didn't want to go down that, 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 that road of, of, of darkness or depression or, or hurt anymore. Because what if something happens to my son? So I was afraid to love my son 100%. But Larry, that didn't last long. That didn't last long. I was forced to rewrite my story on that one. When I held my son and he's making his little noise and every now and then he'll <laughs> touch my nose or touch my lip. Without even a blink, I said, I am all in. Yeah. I am all yeah. in. So yeah. that, 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 I was kind of forced to rewrite my story on that one right there. And but, so uh, Trey, t Trey taught you how to rewrite your story, huh? Trey taught have, me how to rewrite I hope story. I happen to know, I happen to know his son. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> so, so this, I didn't realize that you really have made this shift in your life over the past how many months? Oh, months. It's been years. Uh, we're going on. I start diving deep into the work oh, after okay. my divorce, which was what six or seven years ago. Okay. Okay. Um, but as far as uh, my son, that's, that's three and a half years ago. That's when I really said, I surrender. You know, I started to learn the power of surrendering and the power of being vulnerable. And um, that was my superpower. So uh, there's several things that just led me to this work. And I'm yeah. grateful. I'm grateful that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in this field. Um, because I see transformations every single day in my life and in the lives of my clients. I see these transformations and 
you're never too old, you're never too young to yeah. rewrite your story. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that so true. And, and I find that it's very important for people in my age group, the elderhood that I'm calling it, you have a childhood, you have an adulthood, you have an elderhood, mm -hmm. and people in their elderhood have an opportunity to rewrite their stories in profound and wonderful ways. And I've rewritten my own family story and it had a tremendous impact on me. Um, I'd like to bring up your website, Aaron. This is, we're, we're having a dialogue here today with Aaron J. Fulton, who is a life coach, uh, who, an owner of uh, Embodied Vision Coaching. Yes. At, and you'll find his website at AaronJFulton.com. Yep. Here's what it looks like <laughs> to start off with. So I hope you'll take a uh, click on that sometime and take a look at what he has to offer. But what he really has to offer is the man he is. And uh, he's, he's come to this obviously through tremendous um, insights through life experience. I, I just saw a meme on Facebook that said, uh, what, a, what was it, wasn't it? Was it uh, uh, Oscar Wilde, uh, life offers the worst teaching. It gives you the gives you the experience and then gives you the lesson. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the thing. I was looking at. I was. I was. I was. I, I remember a quote from Michael Jordan, and uh, he says, I, "I never lose. I always win." Ah. And, at first, when I heard this quote, I'm like, oh, what a cocky quote. But yeah. what he was talking about was even in his loss, there is an opportunity to win because there's lessons that are being learned every single time. And once I understood that, it's like, regardless of what happened in your life, regardless of the situation, regardless of the challenges, regardless of the mistakes that we've made in our lives, the win is the lesson that we've learned yes in those situations. yes yes so so here is uh some some other questions that i've had uh in mind um as we prepared and some of these even come from our own own uh own uh folks that we are that may be viewers here um what are some of the principles that are rewriting your own story so rewriting your life story is actually part of my methodology. Uh, my met methodology is activate your awareness, rewrite your life story, and connect with a cohort, make strong connection. That, that's, my, that's, that's my methodology. Um, but there's pillars that I've created for rewriting your life story. And the first pillar is compassion and it aligns with what you said forgiveness compassion I, I wrote on my board it says compassion frees us from judgment which is closely linked to shame yes be compassionate towards others but what about being compassionate towards yourself and forgiving yourself for missing the mark for so long with that compassion comes awareness know what your current foot know where you were and now know your current footing know your current position so compassion is the first pillar that i like to implement with rewriting your life story um, excellent the, the second pillar is perseverance now through the journey of feeling compassionate for yourself and and when we look at the word compassion it means to suffer with so we usually apply that to someone else but we're gonna apply that to ourselves. So the second one is perseverance. While you are being compassionate towards yourself and removing yourself from judgment and removing yourself from shame, there's gonna be this thing that I call the saboteur or the limiting belief that you owe yourself forgiveness. What's gonna push you beyond that limiting belief that you owe yourself forgiveness, perseverance. I want you to think of perseverance as, say for instance, you wanna go up a flight of steps. You wanna go up a flight of steps, but there's a rope that's holding, 
that's, that's holding you back. And as you go up the first two steps, you're like, yes, I got it. Third and fourth step, you feel some tension, but you make it and you say, whew, I still got it. But now the, the true task is gonna come when you gotta confront the things that you've done to yourself in the past. And you gotta forgive those things that you've done in the past. That's the, the, the rope getting tighter and tighter and tighter. But you need support. You need support. So as you're going up the fifth and sixth step, you feel this, this, this rope getting tighter and, and you grab onto the wall and you, you grab onto the banister and you keep on pushing yourself up, pushing yourself up because you know that the reward is at the, the top of the steps. That's what I mean by perseverance. Wow, Aaron, that is a phenomenal image. And what a great metaphor for the real struggle of coming into con to contact with your dark side. You mentioned dark side earlier. Yes, sir. And, and connecting with it and forgiving and embracing it. Yes. Yes. I know Car Carl Jung said, if we don't embrace our dark side, it'll control us. Exactly. Exactly. So you're, you're doing wonderful work. I'm sorry, I interrupted your discussion of the principles. Please continue. Oh, no. So the third is four principles. So we have compassion. We're forgiving ourselves. We have perseverance. Now that we're forgiving ourselves, those old stories are trying to, 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 to come back to us. And, you know, we're still persevering through the past hurt, through the past tears. Now, our attitude has to align with our mission. There has to be a shift in our attitude. Our attitude is what we display, is, is, is our behavior in which we display towards situations. That's our attitude. It's the way that we, 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 we react or respond to things. So now there has to be a shift in our attitude. What's so important about the shift in our attitude is now our inner leader that thing that we that 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 we we thrive off of that that thing that tells us that we can go beyond this limiting belief that we created for ourselves our attitude once it shifts now we have to implement the discipline to maintain that attitude so my method is compassion perseverance attitude discipline Excellent. X. Oh, I was just going to say, I, when it comes to, to, to attitude also, I like to, I tell people, I tell my clients to have like a, a mental trophy room, a, me, a mental trophy room. And, and, and I encourage a lot of your listeners to tap into their mental trophy room. And our mental trophy room is that place in our mind that we go to and reflect on all of our past accomplishments. That helps keep our attitude in that place of, 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 of prosperity. That helps keep our attitude in that place of, of thriving. Um, what, what did you used to do when, when you were in college? What was one of the exciting things that you used to do? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, like, what, 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 what oh. what's one of the things that you used to do in college when you were I was a I was a theater major, Aaron, and I directed directed plays. I uh, put together the whole production, all yeah. by with the help of uh, you know my colleagues, my fellow schoolmates. But I I put together two or three. Um, I don't remember exactly, but two, at least two, yeah. um, one act plays, and yeah, it was just remarkable to to, to uh, be responsible for it all, and have yeah. it come out. So I love that. That's that. It's a trophy for me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So when you're feeling defeated or when you're feeling that, that those old stories that yeah. once held you back, yeah. when you yeah. feel those things start, when you feel those things start to, to try to creep up, there's certain things that you can tap into in your mental trophy room that, that, mm -hmm. that will remind you of, of how awesome Larry is and, and how, <laughs> how you can create stuff, right? May I ride your, your coattail on that one, Aaron? Just oh, yeah. One of the things that I emphasize in sorting out stories is that we we often come across people in the elder years who continue to repeat their same story over and over, and they'll say, and you'll go back and 
it's, uh, it can happen with children will say, why does he tell the same story? <laughs> you know, they're bold enough to say something like that. But, but what's happening, I, I think, is exactly what you're describing. And that is the good feeling and experience of the past is brought into the present. Yeah. Now, there's a technical term that I like to use because I'm a theologian and uh, <laughs> so proud of my theological background. But, <laughs> but there's a word called anamnesis in Greek. And what it means is a refusal to forget, an amnesia. And this anamnesis, we translate as do this, like do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. The remembrance of that past trophy, as I like your, your description, uh, and telling the story of it is the experience of reliving it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good job, man. Good. 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 <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And and it's just discipline. You know, one of the things that I that I encourage my clients to do is once you 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 forgive yourself, you you, yeah. you, you come from a place of compassion towards yourself, and and you persevere, you push through those things that are holding you back, and your attitude shifts around around life and and you know you create a discipline i tell my clients to write words of affirmation probably a two or three or four words of affirmation and place these words in different areas of their home where it's visible because our mind is is is, is our mind can be our best friend or it can be our worst enemy and Oftentimes, because we're human, when we find ourselves struggling to stay disciplined, when we find ourselves struggling to maintain a positive attitude, it just does a world of, of good to see your word of affirmation right before you go into the bathroom or right before you go uh -huh. into the kitchen, just to remind you of who you are and what you're capable of. Do you, do you, recommend, uh, do you recommend repeating them out loud? Do you recommend just looking at them? How do you... What's absolutely absolutely I, I i recommend repeating repeating them out loud one because before you repeat them out loud the first thing that's going to pop in your head is what if someone's here what if someone hears me yeah right. all right and then what if someone's hear me I, i'm not going to do it because i'm going to sound stupid or i'm going to sound weird or something like that and you start to create this story out of nothing you know, yes. and now you're, you're, you're limiting yourself from honoring yes. your own words of affirmation. So before you even think anything, you say yeah. it out loud, I yeah. am worth more than anyone else can view me as. I, I am a champion. I am capable of loving beyond measures. I am capable of rewriting my life story. I am capable of being the best that I can be. I can, I'm capable of being better than I was yesterday. You know, mm -hmm. words of affirmation that help remind you of who you are. And if I may also observe what I, I would also like to affirm in what you're saying is that you focused on being as distinct from doing. I'm, I mean, it's, it's okay to yeah. affirm accomplishments, but what you're doing is saying, Let's affirm who you are, being yeah. the being. Yeah. And um, there, there was a, there was a, a theory about um, transactional analysis. It was called about strokes, mm -hmm. and people need strokes. We need physical strokes. We need mental strokes. We need emotional strokes. Yes. And for every negative stroke, it takes ten positive strokes to counter that. And that's and that's in our own it's strokes we can give ourselves too, as yeah. you so well described, Aaron. Mm -hmm. um, but the, there are strokes for doing, which we tend to focus on in our society. But the strokes for being are the ones that really, really make a huge difference. So, Aaron, this is this is just wonderful to hear you talk about how to help people. Uh, rewrite their story and reprogram, if I may be so bold as to say, reprogram their subconscious mind about who they are. Exactly. Exactly. Repro you said it right there. Reprogram their, their conscious mind. Exactly. You said it right yeah. there. Yeah. You know, and, and just to piggyback off of what you were discussing strokes, I have a video uh, on my Instagram page 
Um, ah. And also my Instagram page is Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, Fulton, F-U-L-T-O-N, Junior, J-R. So Aaron Fulton, Junior. Um, no dot? No dot? No, no dot. That's just my no Instagram uh, feed right Aaron there. Fulton, Aaron Fulton, J-R. Okay. Yep. yep. And I talk about how we live, day, how we have daily deaths as well as daily births. You know, Excellent. things die off and new yeah. things are reborn. So just to fall in line with what you were discussing regarding strokes. Well, Aaron, we're coming to the end of our time and thank you so very much. Uh, Eric, would you put up his, um, his, his uh, website again, the look of his website? There it is again, AaronJFulton.com. And um, we are so fortunate to have your description of yourself, the description of your journey, as well as the description of what your work is and how people can benefit from rewriting their story. I'd like to ask for Eric, if I may also, to put up my website and uh, give a flash on that. This is, uh, in my work, I invite you to a global community for your extraordinary elderhood. Uh, I also have a book that I've produced that I've put together and on the website, oh my gosh, you can, by golly, you can buy it. <laughs> and uh, it's called Don't Just Age, Engage. And it follows on the same principles as what we were talking about here and uh, that we talk about throughout my program with the help of Think Tech Hawaii. You can also get a little uh, podcast there of it, a little reading of it. Aaron, does it make a difference? In the way I tell my story, in the story that I tell and the way I tell it, it sounds like it makes all the difference yeah. in the world. Yes, yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Aloha, you. everybody. Thanks for joining us. Take See you in two bye. weeks.